No find no fault with God. No. Not at all. Not at all. Amen. I go to Genesis chapter five this morning. Something that I went to weeks before, and uh, and I wondered if uh, during the service if I was on the right track or not. Then, then uh, the way the songs were going, I believe the Lord just opened it up for it again. The end, chapter five, verse fifteen. I may not pronounce these names just right, but bear it with us. And Mahay Khalil lived 65 years and beget Jabin. And Mahay Khalil lived after he beget Jabin 830 years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahay Khalil were 895 years and he died. And Jabin lived in hundred. Sixty and two years, and beget Enoch. And Jared lived after he beget Enoch eight hundred years, and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. And Enoch, Enoch lived sixty and five years, and beget Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he beget Methuselah three hundred years, and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and was not. God took him. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. And one song that we sang was that night at the altar I let Jesus in. I started on a journey walking with him. And then Sister Kathy sang everywhere I go. Lord is all the way with me. Hallelujah. And I uh, just begin to study on that this week. Walking with God. Walking with God. Right. And, and 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 you can look at what is in you know uh, the implication of this here, what's implied at the walk with God. The walk with God is a, a habitual uh, course of our conduct. Right. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's more than just a step. That's right. You remember when your, well, not even only yours, but other children, when they get big enough to take a step, well, they're walking now. Yeah. Not hardly. They just take a step or two. Right. They're not walking yet. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'd like to preach today. I really right. do. A walk is a way of life. Yes, it is. Progress. Now I can start to walk home after church. I hope we don't have to, but I can start to walk home after church. And if I just got out here to the road from here and never made it all the way home, the other mile and a half, then I didn't make progress in my walk, did I? Right. We've got to get all the way, right. all the way to where we start. Uh, from the starting point A to B, to get there, we've got to make progress. Amen. And this walk with God is a walk by faith. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. I think that's something we all know. It's a walk by faith. But to walk this walk by faith, we've got to believe that God is. That's right. <laughs> right. When I'm going to walk with something that's abstract, we've got to believe that God is. Right. Even when we can't see Him, we've got to believe that He is. Yes. Right. It's coming back to my mind right now, an illustration that I've used. And uh, my son-in-law has preached uh, around the country in different places, and he's used that illustration too. And uh, But I remember... Whenever Esther and I were young and Brother Mitchell was just a baby, just a few months old. And uh, I've said this before, I believe his first year, that child just about lived with a temperature. He kept, he stayed sick a lot his first year. And uh, we run enough antibiotics for him to kill him, look like. But, uh, but uh, one night he got a temperature and we took him 
uh, we're taking the urban and and just give him a little something, send him home. So I, I thought that night we'd take him to Richmond. And we did, and they didn't do any more than that at Urban. Got his temperature down, sent him home. Well, we'd run a big bill up at the pharmacy. They let me charge things there, and, and uh, a lot of times I'd charge it and pay it off when I got my income tax check. They knew I'd pay, and, and, but I'd run it up so high there, I was really embarrassed. And I'd borrowed enough money from this and that and the other, and I was embarrassed to go back. And uh, we just took it to God that night. I, I, I didn't know what else to do. You know, we, we went to the end of the road. You've heard me tell this before. And so we started praying. And then my, he had a high temperature again that night. His little head was burning hot with fever. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And all of a sudden we just, we didn't realize it. Just came, we just went to sleep. Both of us. Just a sleep coat came over us. And when I woke up and I realized that I had went to sleep with that child sick, I mean, I felt bad, real bad. We well, here I have went to sleep and left this baby sick. And I reached over and I touched his head and the temperature was gone. Mr. Esther woke her up and she touched his head and uh, she realized the temperature was gone. We knew that God had visited us. God had made himself real to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you help us? Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to believe that God is. We're not just walking with something that's not there. We know that he's there even though we can't see him because we felt the results of God moving in our life. Right. Hallelujah. I know it's been tough. It's not been easy. Right. This walk with God not always easy. Right. Especially, brother, if we preach. Right. And when folks get their mind that they're going to go somewhere and go to pull a different direction regardless of what we say, amen, we still got to preach home. Right. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. We're still about to walk on. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So Enoch, we could see that he had a very real sense of a living God. Hallelujah. Because he had fellowship with this God. Now, I know we're not shouting with this, but I'm here to tell us this morning that if we're going to get a walk with God, we've got to have a fellowship walk with him. Yes. Amen. Enoch and God were familiar friends. That's right. Enoch didn't have to worry about telling God everything that he wanted to hear, him to hear and worry about God running and telling him everything that Enoch said. Right. Come on. Now, have you ever had a real close friend and if you had something on your mind and you weren't real sure about what you were thinking, you kind of used her for a sounding board. Come on. Amen. And it turned around and around and realized that sounding board had an echo. It echoed all the way over to the next house and told them what you just said. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm satisfied old brother Edie had some things that he wasn't real sure about. Amen. And we talked to his friend God about it. Amen. That's as far as it went. Amen. He waited till he could hear what God had to say, and then he'd know what to do next. Right. Well, yes. I'd like to preach. Hipping God. I really would. God. They were good God. close friends. God. God. Amen. A fellowship of a believer in his God. It's a very real thing. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Preachers get to where it's hard for them to pray, too, sometimes. Yes. Yes, it does. Now, I see some shaking of heads that some of you know what it's like whenever you run into them stumps to when it gets hard to pray. Preachers yes. run into those things, those times, too. Yes. And when I run into those stumps and then it gets hard to pray, and it stays that way for a couple of days, then I'm concerned because I know that God is real. Right. 
And I know people that don't understand prayer. They don't understand getting through. Amen. And, and, and I asked Sister Esther the other day, when we were struggling, I struggled a little bit, and I said, you having trouble praying? Yeah. She said, all I can do is cry. And I said, if you cry, and you're getting that far, then you're still praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. Praise God. Amen. When you get to where you're struggling, Brother John, and you can't cry. Now, I'm not one of those fellas that cry a lot. Can you get me here? Amen. I don't just break down balls and fall over every little thing. But I like to cry when I'm praying. Yeah. When I'm praying and I can cry, I can feel that fellowship with God. And I don't care if the world understands it or not. I still know what I feel when I'm talking to God. Right. It's a close fellowship. Well, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, well, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's a consciousness, you know, in our inward being that God is close to us. Yes. God's close to us. Yes. Amen. I remember one time I was talking to somebody, and I said, I'm really glad I've got to know you. And I said, I just really hope that the Lord can just keep each other with us in each other's lives forever. There was no time, Brother Bill, they was gone. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, but God's not that way, church. He's there when we're going through the troublesome times, just like He's there when we can feel Him all around us. He's still there, but we've got to have a consciousness in our soul that God is near us. Right. right. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied I'm not the only one. The devil's not tried that on me for a while, but now he has done it. Told me that God has forgotten me. Yes. yes. God didn't forget us. No, he don't. He hadn't forgot us. He no. know, you know, there's, that, there's a likeness when we get in a fellowship with God. You know, when you get to running around associating with people, first thing you know, you get to talk him like them. You get to acting like them. Yeah. You watch these young folks. They get with the wrong crowd. That's right. And they'll start using slang words that dad right. used to call kissing cousins to cussing. That's right. I'm telling you, he'd come from over the couch. If he's sitting there and uh, or wherever he was doing, and we'd pick up some slang word and use it in front of him, I learned real quick, don't be using stuff at you. You had never heard it before from that. I remember. I remember one time. I, 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 I'm just gonna take the time to preach this morning. Come on. When I got into this, I remember one time I heard somebody use the word bet, and we lived in Indiana at that time. And uh, uh, Ain't Ed and them lived uh, pretty close to us. I think they lived in an apartment there, right beside us or something. And I, I used that word in front of her, and she said, "Buddy." Young man, she said, you better not let your daddy hear you say that. <laughs> well, it's just three little letters, you know. And I didn't think that was nothing bad. And uh, so I'm in the kitchen. I'm just about <laughs> four or five years old. and uh, and uh, But I can remember it. And uh, somebody said something, and I said it. And buddy, dad stormed, and he stormed at me, and I was kind of under the table, the kitchen table, and he stormed at me and he scared me so bad I raised my head up real quick like to knock my brains out. He didn't have to whip me. I done done it to myself. Hey, Amen. You know, Dad took that word oh, yeah. and, and it's serious. Right. Benton was gambling. Right. Yeah. And so he didn't want me using the word. Right. Come on now. I'm oh, talking wow. about be, you know, getting like people picking up the same things that other people do. The closer we get to God, Amen. The more we feel God's presence among us and Amen. around us, the more we start acting like the things. Somebody said, what would Jesus do? Amen. Well, just pray long enough, then you'll find out what he'd do about it. Right. Right. You start placing a feeling on the inside of you. Amen. Whether you should go, whether you shouldn't go, whether you should say it, or whether you shouldn't say it. I remember one time I got ready to trade cars. And I don't know a lot about cars. And I, I, I got to want to trade and, 
and inside of me, I knew better. I knew better. And I traded it away. And I wound up having to trade again before I got that paid for. And you know what that does? That gets you upside down on your payments, and you owe more for the thing than it's worth. Most of the time, you do anyway. Amen. Can you help me here? And then I remember when we bought that uh, GMC Safari van, that white van, had the little red stripes down it. And uh, it had 39,000 miles on it. I really believe, Sister Kathy, that it had been wrecked and fixed back. And nobody had, because it always had a, a air leak around the driver's door, but it didn't matter. The thing run good. And, and, and we run that thing and run that thing and run that thing. And finally, it blew up on Sister Marcia. Her brother Tom wound up with it. And he loaned it to her when her car tore up. But I'm telling you, we run it, run it, run it, run it before. I just had a feeling like we'd get some use out of that. Right. You know, God does us that way. Right. We don't have to just speak to us in verbal terms. When we get in a relationship with Him, we, He can just give us a feeling. And I went through some things in the past week. And some of you are aware of Some of you probably aren't. But, uh, uh, and it's disturbing. Disturbing. I don't know what to do, where to go. And God still hasn't told me what to do or where to go about it. He just simply come over me with a sense of peace. And when he does that, amen, then God still got it all in his hands. Right. You learn those things. In your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, if we walk with God, we become God-like. Now, I know when we do that, people are going to criticize us. And they're going to say things about us. Amen. But what we're doing, we're obeying that precept. Of where God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. There are just some things that we're just simply not going to look at. He don't hold it. I know you're not you're not paying attention to me this morning, some of you aren't, but I, 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 I just feel like preaching to it. There's some things we're just not going to cast our eyes upon right. because the image of it's going to get ingrained in our mind right. and it's going to mess up oh, that concept of what God is because God it's going God. to be coming back to us and back to us and back to us. Yes. So let's just get it out of our mind. A man that, or a person that walks with God is going to have a particular aim or a particular goal in our life. We're not just existing. I'm going to tell you this morning, there's too many people that profess to be Christians that just exist. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm just hanging on. Oh, God. <laughs> I believe this is more than just existing. Amen. Yes, Lord. God. You're actually doing something for the kingdom of God. Right, Lord. Advancing for God. Right. Gracious Lord. Gracious now, when they Israel come to the Red Sea, they were just existing. And they actually thought that their existence was about to be done with because they figured that if Pharaoh's army caught up with them, they would annihilate them. Now, they probably would some of the leaders, but they would have took the majority of them back and made slaves out of them. Again. Mm -hmm. Now we're just existing. But God had plans for them to go forward. Right. And right through the middle of the Red Sea, they went forward. Amen. When it looked like there was no possible way to get out of this. I preach it to us today. Amen. That there's an aim, there's a goal in life. God's got some place for you to go. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A walk doesn't end. You know, a lot of people get a concept of, well, I'm walking with God. I read my Bible every day. I'm walking with God. I pray every day. Well, you need to read your Bible every day. You need to pray every day. But when you close your Bible up and you get up from your knees in prayer, you walk with God, don't stop. It keeps on going. That just simply tells us where we need to go, what we need to do. Amen. Well, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
us, dear God. I'm not going to preach too long this morning. Help us, dear God. Help us, but God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Jesus, Jesus. When Peter walked, when Peter walked with God, Jesus, Jesus. he got into some extraordinary things. Yeah. Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain with Jesus, and Jesus was transfigured. While he was there, Peter, James, and John had been asleep, and they woke up and they saw that. Yeah. But they would never have seen anything if they hadn't been walking. They hadn't been with them. Right. And Peter happened to be not with the Lord at the particular time, but he was doing what God said. He got on the ship, and he started to the other side. You know, he didn't want what he was told. And then the storm came up. And then here comes Jesus walking on the water. And, and, and we know we know the story. Amen. But, 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 but Peter looks out there and he realizes that Christ, if that's you, bid me come to you. And Peter walked on the water. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Walking with Jesus, they got to walk in the room with a dead child and, and, and Jairus' his daughter. And the Lord raised her from the dead. They saw all these things walking with Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said in Sunday school class this morning, Jesus told them, these, uh, these things that you see me do, greater than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Right. And then we stop. Because we don't think we can ever get that close, close to God, with all of our troubles, with all of our trials, and with all the things that we have to deal with in everyday life. We just simply have got the mentality that we're never going to get there. But if the Bible says we can, then we can. But we got to get past our problems. Right. To get on through to God. Yes. Okay, God, you've got this thing in your hand. I don't understand what you're doing with it. I don't understand what you mean by it. But you've got it in your hand. And Lord, I'm going to trust you with it all the way. Right. Yes. Well, oh, hallelujah. God, help us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us, God. Help us, God. Hallelujah. Help us, God. The Holy Ghost will come. And assist us in our walk with God. You see, we can be here visibly, and then we're still not here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That happens to us a lot, don't it? Yes. We can come to the house of God, and we can be here visibly, but we still not be here because our minds are somewhere else. Uh -huh. And I've said this numerous times, and I've been in church like that, and. More than once, somebody get up, give a testimony, or just simply get up and say, God said, for us to get our minds together. Yes. And I watch the service change just like turning the light on. Yes. But today, we're not having God move among us like that. And we come to the house of God and we're here visibly, but we're not here. Something's got us disturbed. It's something that we want. Most of the time it's something that we want, and it ain't happening like we want it to happen. Oh God. Help us Jesus. We talked about it in the Bible class, and I guess you all did too. When Saul went into battle with the Amalekites and he wanted the battle to turn out his way. And he did. It did. He done it his way. God let him do it. But look what it cost him. Right, yes. Look what it cost him. Oh, God. Look what it's costing us when we yes. start pulling against the will of God. Okay, God, I want it my way. Right. Let's walk with God. Jeez. Go where he leads. Go where he leads. Amen. Dear God. Boy, I'm cold this morning. I'm going to say this. I'm 
remember whenever we take the children places, I never had any problem with Brother Mitchell, who was raised in there, either uh, knowing where he wanted to go, doing whatever we wanted to do, whether I was there or whether I wasn't. And when I just go ahead, but Michelle, she gets stubbed up sometimes, not on me, but she went on her mother. She'd get stubbed up and she wouldn't want to go or want something and she didn't think she needed it or he didn't have the money to let her have it. And she'd throw her a fit. And she'd say, I'll tell you daddy when he gets home. Well, she'd spend the rest of the day begging her not to tell me. But she knew she'd get in trouble when right? she told me. And I might not have whipped her hard, but she would know that I'd been there. And mind her mama next time. And sometimes we get to doing God that way, Sister Kathy. I, I, I want it my way, God. I want it my way. I want it my way. And God said, I want to go this way with you. Yes. Right. And he's got us here where we are today. And we're telling us we need to listen to the voice of God. Amen. But one of, our, one of these days, we're going to walk where God is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're simply going to walk where God is. Right. Now, we've heard, the, heard it said, and I've preached on it, and others have preached on it. He didn't want to walk with the Lord and got way out. He got too far away from God. Too far away from home to get back that day. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking about. He got to walk with God. Walk with God. Walk with God. Past where oxygen is. Now, these astronauts get in these space suits and these space shuttles and things, and they go up past where oxygen is, and they can survive a few days until they come back. Yeah. But Enoch was just like you and me. He's walking with God and I'm satisfied, sisters, that the fellowship was so close that he really didn't want to get away. And they were not just walking on water. They started walking on air. Yeah. Does that make any sense to you? Not and they just keep walking. They just keep going and keep going. And after a while, there's no oxygen up there where they're at. And Enoch either has to go back or get translated, and as the writer of Hebrews said. And so he gets translated and just keeps going. And he was not. They couldn't find him anymore because he just simply walked with God. How did they know he was with God? Because he was with God every day. And they knew he took these walks with God. And they knew when he did come back that a wild beast didn't get him. He was with God. Right. Right. Yeah. Just knew it. Just knew it. Just knew it. I was talking to us here today. And since I put this together this week and hope that it would preach a little better than it has this morning, I realize that in my walk with God, that there's going to be some things that got a little different because God wants it that way. Is that what you said, Lance? He wants you to let you walk what God really, really, really wants out of you. What He really wants. All of these hours. Church, whether we realize it or not, how close it is to come to God for a sound. Right, yeah.
for the sound, real soon, real soon. Going somewhere. Oh, yeah. Real soon. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing?